to his how old is his kid 10 7 12 i don't know whatever that he was gonna commit to like training him to do baseball to play baseball at like a really high level because I guess his kid is now showing acumen or showing a possibility of being really good at baseball. Before it was jujitsu and some other stuff, but now all of a sudden it's flipping baseball that he's going to be a stud in, or it'll be, I think it'll be before that it's even football. So he's going to commit to like training him or something, and he's kind of talking it up. And number one, it's really embarrassing because he's using his kid as like a human meat shield. That's really strange to kind of deflect away from a absolute horror show of having to cancel that whole entire UK date, but. Even if this is true and this comes from a genuine place, it's a bit disturbing that, you know, you're basically putting your kid into a fucking training camp. Um, for what? It's exactly. It just seems a bit bizarre for me personally. But let's check the whole thing out. We can see what they're saying here, courtesy of the Fire and the Kid, um, episode number 903. You've been at this for a long time, man. Long time. Well, it's like my son, he's really into baseball. <clears throat> he, has a, he has a coach he works with and he has tryouts. It was just hilarious for seven year olds, but it's so competitive. They have tryouts in uh, end of July. And uh, we went to the, I've been taking them to the, the batting cages and we're throwing all the time, five times a week. And then Jesus yesterday, uh, he hasn't been able to do the fast pitch. A seven year old <laughs> that's probably just got interested in playing baseball because kids like to do everything, right? When you're a kid, you know, I played everything, every single sport cricket, football, basketball, um, you know, uh, track and field like netball badminton tennis you did everything then after a while when you get older you start to kind of hone in on the things you actually want to do or enjoy but you're a kid you just play sports for the sake of it and because you get a chance to hang out with your friends simple as that really um but yeah to turn this into like okay we're going to pursue this as a professional sport at seven years old is fucking wild <laughs> especially in lieu of like cancelling the uk tour dates like you're just shifting all that energy you would have been putting into your tour into your kid it's not going to be toxic at all is it not going to be toxic at all it's the the drugs machine mm. he, he just it's fucking fast dude for a seven-year-old it's so fast and yesterday he's doing it he's hitting it i'm like oh shit he's getting better thank god because that baseball is not my thing but i know the mechanics part of it and just the work ethic if you want to be an outlier i'll get you there yeah so we're driving he's like dad i'm tired i'm like good that's what we need <laughs> If you want to be an outlier, I'll get you there. It's kind of hard for him to say that because he's never really been an outlier, has he, Brendan, in his athletic pursuits? I would say, anyway. He's never really been an outlier. Like, he he did pretty well to kind of get from being an average footballer to kind of going into the UFC. But at the time that he was in the UFC, if I'm not mistaken, athletics um, or being the way he was was kind of maybe a thing. That was a good thing, right? Clearly, that was something that could be used to your advantage. But then when skill became a thing, he started to lose and then he couldn't really compete and then had to kind of retire and pivot to something else. So he hasn't really shown any acumen or any kind of evidence that he's been an outlier in his own athletic pursuits. That's the only weird thing about it. He did. And then uh, there's the reason, one of the reasons I'm not torn so much in the summer is I told my son I'm going to dedicate myself to him for baseball. He's, he plays basketball and he's good. Jiu-Jitsu wrestling, he's an outlier. Football. That is so shameless. That is so shameless. But if you actually listen to what he says, like he did the same thing that he did with Aerial Beef. Remember the Aerial Beef? He did this thing where he was apologizing. I don't know if it's like a thing people do when they're, maybe they feel like they've been cornered or they feel bad or you're lying. But he was like, swallowing a lot like hard swallowing like he had a fucking frog in his throat it was weird how he was talking i think some of you remember the stream i did i was like why does he keep swallowing and talking like that he never speaks like that before it sounded like he had a really dry throat maybe he's been crying i don't know what the vibe is but he kind of sounds the same here when he makes an excuse about the about the tour listen listen to him carefully driving is like dad i'm tired i'm like good that's what we need dude and then uh there's the reason one of the reasons i'm not torn so much see that that, that weird thing and he already sounds super emotional. So it kind of sounds like he's lying. And again, to kind of use that as an excuse is hilarious because he still hasn't explained why he canceled the UK tour. There's been no official explanation as to why this tour that he was promoting for a good year or half a year has now been canceled out of the blue with no explanation whatsoever to the fans. He hasn't explained that at all, which is very odd and kind of maybe shows that you know, not, not, it's not all good over there at flipping the Shop household, but instead of just being honest and just kind of making a joke of it or just being vulnerable for the sake of it, he's kind of protecting his ego and 
that shares a lot about him. Maybe behind the scenes, he's the type of person who kind of laughs and mocks other comics who cancel shows or can't sell out. And now it's starting to happen to him. He can't, you know, he can't process it. He can't comprehend it. He's having a hard time to, you know, to kind of make sense of it. So now he's trying to cover um, himself by throwing his kids under the bus in a weird way <laughs> to excuse him from cancelling it but just just listen to it again the, the hard swallow is fucking crazy work ethic if you want to be an outlier i'll get you there yeah so we're driving he's like dad i'm tired i'm like good that's what we need dude and then uh there's the reason one of the reasons i'm not torn so much in the summer is i told my son i'm gonna dedicate myself to him for baseball he's he plays basketball and he's good jujitsu wrestling he's an outlier football he's good um, soccer, he's good, and he's the big baseball the might be the sport. Baseball, he he gravitates towards, and so I told him, I said, "But you're like me as a kid. I played everything, but you're kind of one foot in. You you have fun because your friends are doing it." I said, and "You're gravitating towards baseball," and I said, "If if you want this, dude, I'm tell you got a dad who knows. I dude, I'm gonna I can get you s pretty far, and then the rest is gonna be on you. Mm. But all you have to do is commit." And I go, "All your buddies, this is what's gonna happen. That's what happened with me." In the summer, your buddies are going, like you told me, they're going to Fiji and they're going to Paris. They're, they're watching YouTube and playing video games. You're going to be working. It's not fun. I'm telling you right now, it's not fun. But Imagine talking to a seven-year-old like this about this. Like, what is this nonsense? We've not heard anything from Brendan about this stuff beforehand the, when the tour wasn't starting. And all of a sudden, the tour didn't sell and he's fucking turning his house into a training camp to occupy his time because he's going to be bored too because he's not going to be on tour and going to comedy clubs as often as he's just like. So he's doing everything possible to get outside of the house. <laughs> Instead of being happy just to just like spend some quality time with your family and sit down, he's turning into another like project type of thing, which is really, really strange. Again, who knows? Maybe the kid is actually a bit of a freak um, when it comes to fucking playing sports and shit. And maybe he actually has a natural ability and has taken really well to fucking baseball. It just seems very very heavy-handed and unnecessary in this way but who knows boy is it worth it i said if that's what you want i'll show you the blueprint but i'm telling you man it's work dude mm. it's fucking work buddy and it's not gonna be cool it's not gonna be cool your friends are gonna want to do this and this you're not gonna be able to do that your friends are gonna want to eat this you're not gonna be eating that i'm telling you dude that's what uh, ronaldo says and I, I, I i told him I, I said i'm telling you dude we can go down this path it's a the kid is seven. <laughs> you think he's like 17. <laughs> it's like, what? Like, aren't you meant to make it like fun for the kid? Just like to have a good time so you don't get burned out or something. I don't know, man. Yo, big up Josie Masters. Big up, big up. Good to see you. Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Again, maybe I don't have kids. I don't know how to kind of maybe accurately kind of look at this sort of stuff. And maybe if you do have a kid that's a bit athletic, you know, the tendency is to kind of try to make it work because you only get one shot at an athletic career and it does probably need to start quite early on to kind of get started i understand but fucking hell man this is a bit much motherfucker i said but you know what's cool if it was for everyone everyone would do it it's not if you want to be an outlier this is what's going to take and it's not going to be the cool is trendy he showing those is he yes. showing real talent yes and i said it's not gonna be the cool trendy thing to do but trust me it's the juice is worth the fucking squeeze dude Sacrifice now and live like a king later. All what evidence does he have to say that really? Was the juice worth the squeeze with the UFC thing to the comedy? I guess maybe he could say that because would Brendan have ended up doing comedy and podcasting if he didn't have a mediocre type of USC career? Even though he beat some good people, you know, it probably didn't match his expectation because he wanted to be a champion. So in that case, it was kind of mediocre, even though he was a top 10, top 15 guy. Um, maybe without that he wouldn't have got stand up and he wouldn't have done podcasting so maybe it was the juice was worth the squeeze but it's a lot of pressure and flipping shit to put on your seven year old kid unless they're legitimately asking you to take them you know down that path like they're begging you but I think there should be more restraint from a dad you should be a little bit more hesitant to not want to put your kid through like a fucking training boot camp for to be a professional athlete you should be a little bit more like hey just have fun have a good time you shouldn't really be like sticking it on them like this i don't know maybe i'm just over exaggerating i don't know all your friends are gonna be doing all this shit we're not gonna be doing that he's, he's how old seven that's pretty wild that he's understanding and i that. and i and i told him and you know i i was trying to make him because really serious and i was honest with him i said i'm spent I'm committing myself this summer to you man 
It's you and me, buddy. You're yeah, waking exactly. up. Uh, big up Yoshi in the chat. I appreciate you. Yoshi said, and if you knew anything about having a kid turn into an athlete, he would want his kid to play all types of sports because you develop different skills doing different sports. Exactly. That's what I would have thought. Most kids that I grew up with, especially the ones that went on to do professional sports, like um, I think of a couple of who went on to play professional football, they were good at everything. They were good at cricket. They were fast. Um, they could play basketball, good hand-eye coordination with tennis and shit. But they just happened to kind of make it playing professional football. But they were good at all sports. I can't think of many professional athletes I went to school with that were just sucked at fucking basketball or badminton. They were good at everything. They fucking crushed everybody. It was annoying because they just they just found it so easy, right, to do everything. And, and they played it all. And it was always fun to them. It wasn't like they were kind of eating fucking chicken and broccoli every day and stuff. You know what I mean? They weren't drinking protein shakes. Like, they were just really good at a sport. They just had a, it's like a kid in school that has a real natural ability with fucking maths or with fucking English literature or shit. Like, it's just something that you just see as evident, but it doesn't mean you're getting them, you're getting them to do fucking TED Talks and stuff. This is bizarre, man. Up with me, I'm, run, I'm running with them in the mornings at seven, I'm running with the hills with them in the mornings. We're doing all this shit. I told him, I said, I'm, it's. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you can hear me. Okay, back, 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 back. So, um, I was saying, sorry, before I got really interrupted by my fucking no audio popping off, I was saying this. It's been hilarious to see the amount of people in the fucking clip that I uploaded on my channel um, about Brendan lying about the NFL and people schooling me in the comments. I had people schooling me in the comments telling me that I got it completely wrong, right? <laughs> Uh, so now you have to pay your internet bill i paid it man <laughs> get out of here i had people kind of telling me i, I got it completely wrong and um schooling me on it because i had no idea i completely fucked up i had no idea that you could legitimately just turn up at an nfl trial just being a regular guy like i could go so if i went to an nfl trial um and i was a quote-unquote walk-on or something that doesn't mean I could that I couldn't then say I played in the NFL because I technically didn't play in the NFL. I just was a fucking, you know, a human fucking crash dummy <laughs> during a fucking trial game or something. Do you know what I mean? They needed a, a six foot black guy, um, a six foot pudgy black guy to fucking, you know, just stand there and get hit or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's basically what they might need is so that Brendan lie was fucking epic that he said that about himself, man. Legitimately one of the worst things I heard because I don't know why, but in my head I thought he played like D one football and then he got scouted to play a little bit for the Buffalo Bills, you know, and then he didn't make it in the end because he wasn't maybe good enough, but he had like some time with them. I didn't know he just legitimately went to like a couple training camps and that was it. That doesn't mean you play for them. It's like it's Eddie Eddie said, Yeah, the movie replacement the movie replacement is all about that. Okay, okay, cool. The replacements. What is that? I never heard of that. I got to check that. Let me see if I can watch that. The replacements. What is this? Okay, cool. The sports. Okay, I've never watched. I never watched this. I'm gonna check this out. Actually, this might actually ex educate me on this whole regard. What's this movie called? The Replacements. Okay, cool. Might have to check it out. The Replacements. Um, is a 2000 sports comedy filmed by Howard Deutsch starring Keanu Reeves, Gene Hackman. It's based on a true story. Okay, cool. All right, I'm going to check this out. Thanks, Eddie D, for the recommendation. I'm going to check this out. This looks good. I'm a deaf, 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 deaf. Deaf, check this out. Anyway, let's go back to what, seeing what they're saying. It's going to be work, man. <laughs> Agostino, Invincible Zinger, Fly Eagles, Fly. <laughs> 
<laughs> Can you imagine me playing football, mate? It would be an absolute fucking disaster. <sighs> I'm down to do it. And then he's like, oh, yeah, that's what I want. Because the batting cages, he was kind of not doing great. And he goes, again. I was like, oh, I like that. And I didn't say anything. Because I, I, I'm not like, again. You know, I'm like, whatever you want to go, let's go. Day. No, I'm like, let's go, dude. I don't give a fuck. Don't believe him in the slightest. Press F for doubt on that one. He's definitely telling him again, pick up your bat, stop being a pussy. You know what I mean? He's definitely one of those kind of dads. I don't believe this in the slightest. No way. That's an obvious lie. He's like, again, I'm like, all right. So he hit, he hit one. The first one was like a foul. I'm like, that's not great. So I put a token in. That time he hits five again. And it's late. We're talking, it's 630 already. The sun's coming down. We did an hour and a half before sprints, base running, throwing, hitting. He was again, all right, put a co coin in. I run out of coins. I go, I'm out of coins. He goes, oh, dad, can you get more? I'm like, yeah, I can get more. Go back. Have it. <laughs> Why does everything that surrounds Brendan always sound like some sort of Hollywood movie? It always sounds like some sort of fucking Hollywood movie from the fucking Mayweather comment. That, that Mayweather lie that Brendan said where he bumped into Mayweather at some UFC fight or something to the showtime and met Floyd Mayweather said to fucking Brendan Shaw, oh, you're that white guy that, you know, works too much. Like, come on, man. I'm sure Brendan, there's a thing with Brendan. His lies are very obvious to me because I grew up with a lot of people. I don't know why this is the case because um, I'm not a liar myself, really. I don't go out of my way to kind of paint myself to be a certain way with certain things. But for some reason, I grew up with a lot of people who lied a lot when I was growing up, like about the stuff they did, about the stuff they owned. So I can recognize some of the little telltale signs. And I'm sure Brendan's lies are based in some truth. Like, part of me believes that he might have bumped into Floyd Mayweather in the back of some Showtime boxing event. And they exchange a couple of words, maybe a little head nod. But he always adds a little bit of paprika to the fucking story. Oh, I bumped into Floyd Mayweather. He said he's a fan. He said he's a big fan. He said he watched me in a companion the other day. He said he asked me for my picks on recommendations on who's going to win whatever fight. Then he told me I'm the white guy that works too much. See, so it's, there's probably a basis of truth, a nugget of truth, but he just adds unnecessary stuff on top of it to make himself look better than what he is. It's so weird, man. Like a grown man doing this. Like, what are you do? Who are you? Who are you trying to impress? Just be yourself, bro. How long you want to do this? He's like, how many got? I got five coins here. This means you would have hit ten times, dude. And listen to how he's talking to his kid too. How many do you want? Like seven year old kid is talking like that. <laughs> it's like the kid is in his early 20s <laughs> come on man it's like 20 balls you know that's a lot of fucking it's 200 balls you're hitting here dude again 200 balls 200 balls again 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 Damn. we get in the car and again i'm not a trophy dad i'm like bubba <laughs> uh it sounds like it the only time brendan talks about his kids especially the oldest one is when it comes to sports there's no real like nice you know topics on conversations about his kid when it just comes to general stuff it's always to do with sports always athletic achievement nothing else so this sounds like you're a trophy dad to me in my opinion but again what do i know this is a lot dude um, if you ever don't want to do this you want to go play video games with your friends do that buddy be a kid yeah but if this is what you want th it's this every single he loves day it. loves it is he and, is and, he... That, and i made him laugh i go if you're scared go to church <laughs> He goes, why do you go? You scared? Go to church. Drink a warm glass of milk and go to church. I said, you, to, right I said, you scared? Go to church. Yeah. This guy, man. He's laughing so hard. You, you scared? And then when you pass my church, I go, I'll pull in. I'll pull in. If you, if you want to play games and stuff, go to church. That's the greatest. He's thing laughing so hard. I love that shit. I, I love it. I, and then at night, you can watch. Uh, he has a TV in his room. He can watch TV for 45 minutes before bed. He likes to relax, unwind. And then I, I we have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this kid like it. <laughs> he just he's like I don't know man this kid is like the oldest seven year old I've ever heard in my entire life he just sits there and watches Fox News <laughs> before he goes to bed <laughs> he's just there watching ESPN for 45 minutes exactly and then turns it off and goes to sleep like what is his kid David fucking Goggins or something like what's going on <laughs> just the kid might have the tism <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Honestly, this just sounds. I don't know exactly, Tom. His kids got a mortgage and a pension scheme. <laughs> A kid loves Tucker Carlson before bed. Honestly, doesn't this just sound like guys in the chat? Tell me, have you haven't? I've, I've maybe it's just me. I've grown up with so many people in my life who used to lie like this so often. They used to lie about the hot, like especially holidays. They'd lie about where they went. Like one kid will lie, he went on holiday and just not come out the whole summer, and like you know, and they'll pretend like he went and he come and he, and he act like he came back somewhere when he pops out of his house. Another one lying about their games, lying about the bikes, lying about girlfriends that don't exist, boyfriends that don't exist, jobs. Like, don't you remember that those kids in school? They just lie about everything, like unnecessarily. Like fucking hell! And he still the, the weird thing about Brendan. The weird thing I'm saying with those kids that used to lie when I used to grow up. I grew up in a really rough area of London in a, you know, with people around me, everyone was basically poor. If you're rich, you basically had money to buy your own lunch, right? You didn't eat the school dinner. That's when you kind of showed you had a bit of money. So I can understand why people would create these lies or say these lies because you wanted to kind of give yourself a different, you know, narrative as Brendan would say, but also kind of escape your hellhole of a daily life. So maybe adding a couple of lies to your story kind of made you just feel good about yourself. But Brendan's somewhat accomplished, successful in his own right, stand-up career. You know, you don't think it's funny. He's got his own thing. He does his own thing. He makes his own money. Like, that's great. Like, why do you need to lie at this point? Maybe when you're like a kid and you've got nothing to your name and you want to appeal cool and seem down, you lie about your own Xbox, you lie you have a PlayStation, you lie that you went on a good, you went to Disneyland, you lie that you've got these Nikes but you're not allowed to wear them because your mum doesn't let you wear whatever. But when you're a grown adult, lying about this sort of stuff is so strange. <laughs> I'm on the streets of Af London stand. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know how corny it sounds when someone says they're from a rough part, but I just had to describe it. The streets of Af London stand is funny. You have a camera. What Josh is saying here, I worked with somebody like that in the biggest lies you could ever imagine. Yeah, I just, like I said, I understand it if you're like, got nothing going for you in life. I clearly, I understand it. I don't like it, but I understand it. But when you're somewhat successful in Brendan's case, why are you lying so much? Like, why? Especially about stuff like this. Like, why are you lying at like this? Like, he's only talking about this stuff now because, like I said, his UK tour got cancelled. If his UK tour didn't get cancelled, he wouldn't be at home playing baseball with a kiddo or spending time spending summer with the kiddos he'd be in europe as he says europe um europe <laughs> um you know enjoying himself having a good time with his boys but the fact that he didn't sell tickets now all of a sudden he's turned into fucking beast of a dad like come on bro i mean that's how you can see right and so i told him i go when i was yours i was obsessed with football only thing that mattered was football saturday night was saturday night live outside that it's football and look where that got him. A walk on at Buffalo Bills, and that's it. So somehow he thinks that experience is going to be able to... Don't get me wrong, maybe the UFC career can give you that, but it's just a weird certainty of like, yeah, because I made it in a sport that I didn't know existed before I played football, now suddenly I'm going to be able to help you become a pro in a sport that I don't really know either. Strange one, but you know. Oh, dude, I was obsessed. Not because my dad told me that's what I want to do with my life. I was obsessed with it. It's all, if you want, I was an expert in football. It's like, that's what it takes. So I tell him that, and I'm like, but have, uh, we're going to watch Boss Baby or something like that. He's like, yeah, I'll figure out. I'm like, right, have fun, dude. And I, I get on the camera and watch. Boom, watching baseball. He loves Bryce Harper. How? Because um, they have this similar hair. Is he, is he uh, going to be a monster? Is he a big boy? He's a big boy. He is. So he's got, he's got daddy's genes. Although your wife and her brother's no slouch. No. <laughs> Brian's the biggest cuck in it. If there's anyone that's going to fucking polish brendan's knob it's definitely brian callan fucking hell man and it's weird as well because i sometimes get the feeling a little bit because brendan's made a lot of jokes about brian's kids not being athletic right brian's son in particular being a little bit you know a little bit um soft that's what brendan would describe him as i get a feeling sometimes like he kind of peak he kind of peacocks with his kids like your kid doesn't is not hasn't really got a natural acumen for sports is uncoordinated doesn't have good and hand eye coordination in general but my kid is, you know, I kind of feel like he does that. And I'm sure parents do that. I'm sure there are some parents who can see that their kid is a little bit more, you know, has a bit more uh, proclivity of playing sports. And then if another kid doesn't, especially if it's two boys, they go out of their way to always talk about 
how much of a beast their kid is to the other parent that has the kid who isn't really into sports. I'm sure that's the thing. I'm sure. Because I get the feeling that sometimes he does this a lot to kind of humble brag on Brent, Brian. Because Brian's always got this suppressed, you know, urge to be like a man's man. But he's not. And then he has a kid who clearly isn't a man's man in his eyes either. And, you know, he's sitting there kind of wishing that he had Brendan's kid as a kid or something. I don't know. It's just a strange thing. They have this weird dynamic when it comes to this sort of stuff. Well, her, I mean, her brother played college baseball. It's an athletic yeah. kid. Yeah, he was a remember catcher. Remember when he was throwing... Ca catchers, catchers are the... I don't know if you remember this. We were, throwing, we were throwing those... those little round rubber balls at each other oh when we we're at the and he, and he started the throwing the ball and i was like dude that ball was like ah uh, it looked like yo big up austin casey appreciate you brother i feel like brenda has imposter syndrome he knows the only reason he has had success is because of rogan and callan so he's constantly lying to prove to everyone that he's legit big up austin casey appreciate you for the 10 dollar donation you got a point there but i don't think so Part of me just thinks Brand Brendan's always been a liar. I don't know why, but I can sense it. I've seen these people before in my life. He's just always been a liar. He's always been somebody that just lies about everything. And he's got this like, he lives and dies by the mantra of like, fake it till you make it. You know? Because usually I feel like the fake it till you make it thing is something that's quite situational, circumstantial. At the moment where you really, really need it, you kind of use the fake it to make it to get your foot through the door. And then once your foot is through the door, you then kind of show and prove with your talent, with your hard work, with your work ethnic, as Brenda would say. You don't keep faking it till you're making it. You don't. Once you got the job, you actually show and prove with your talent. But he doesn't. He does it. He does, you know, the whole fake it to make it to the end. Um, hence why he buys views and stuff. Like, it's all just an image thing. It's not really about the work, you know what I mean? It's not really about the craft. It's not really about the legacy. It's not really about, you know, adding your fucking voice to the cultural timeline of arts or whatever. It's just about the image of appearing successful. Like, that's probably why he got the, he accepted the fucking comedy special from, from LA, from, sorry, from Showtime. That's the main thing. Why would you, who in their right mind would accept a comedy special two years into doing stand-up especially the brand of stand-up that brendan does if if you were maybe a savant and you came into it really being this really on the button you know orator that's able to kind of touch on cultural and societal issues with your stand-up and you just are this once in a lifetime freak fair enough but if you're just a guy that has like jokes about your college experience playing football being in the ufc looking like a jock but you're not you shouldn't be expect you shouldn't accept a deal to do a stand up special two years into your career. But why does he do it? Because it looks good as an image. It kind of makes him look successful if he gets a stand up special with Showtime. So he accepts it because it's a fake it till you make it thing. So part of me just thinks Brenda's always been a liar. I understand what you mean. He probably does have a bit of imposter syndrome, but I just think he's always been a liar. And I think for whatever reason, his career, it actually has helped him. You know, it's actually has helped to be a liar. It's got him pretty well, pretty far in life to kind of like fake it till you make it. And now he just can't, you know, he doesn't know anything better than just doing that, which is weird personally. But hey, um, let's continue. It's like a UFO. It's like, oh, like, oh geez. You don't realize when baseball players throw, holy like, holy shit. shit. No, you know, he, his he makes a living teaching baseball, dude. He coaches a team. They just won the championship. They all got rings, sent a picture yeah. of all their rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does privates from pasadena to fucking malibu like big boys like he's a baseball expert yeah i, I was my uh, son has that our boy kevin bay's got that baseball gym in uh in arizona and i was throwing i was throwing i was trying to throw pitches i think i i got up to 68 miles an hour or something like that i don't know what i, was I don't even know what's good i mean obviously the pros are throwing a hundo Dude, and we're never gonna do that but i don't know what's throwing good. it started throwing the ball and i was like oh lordy 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 what is what they oh do? The, bro like now i'm getting more into baseball i'll watch videos because I'll watch some to help my son out with like timing and his bat speed and his foot placement, all that. So I don't yeah. seem like I'm bullshitting him. You'll see these little Puerto Rican kids who are six, bro. Are they Cuban or Puerto Rican? There's both. Dominican. Dominican. I mean, Dom <laughs> uh, Cuban, both. Dominican. <laughs> Let's get that one more time. <laughs> that so I don't yeah. seem like I'm bullshitting him. You'll see these little Puerto Rican kids who are six, bro. Are they Cuban or Puerto Rican? There's both. Dominican? Both. Dominican. Dominican. <laughs> Dominican. 
You gotta love this guy. Like, it's Dominican. My Dominican. The Dominican kids yes. who are like six. Yes. Oh, well, it's Bubba. A religion. And there's no. Well, it's a religion. There's no private training. Bubba, they, they're just they've playing been with each other. Baseball since for six years. It's in their blood. Yeah. It's. It's best mind coaches, blown. everything else. There's mind a whole blown. book about the coaches there. There's a picture on. I, I, it might be the Padres. I forget. He's 19 years old. I think he's the the youngest starting pitcher. I forget. He's like 19 or 20, but he came from the Dominican. Yeah. And you just look at him like, holy, and he throws. He yeah, it's dude. like Pedro Martinez, my size, but just throwing, you know. Anyway, you get the gist. Um, pray for that kid because bloody hell, mate. Bloody fucking hell. Pray for that fucking kid. Like, honestly, pray for that fucking child. What an absolute weird upbringing to have, man. Like, have your dad fucking, you know, funneling his own, you know, suppressed or lack of ambition through you or whatnot or failed dreams just that must be that must be a hard thing to kind of make work to be fair fucking hell 